Germ D, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we're actually live. Okay. He, he, he is with us here today yet again. I believe we are live. We are we are testing out a new system. Uh, there's still you know more and more improvements. Next thing is uh, that we get to connect this these fucking phones. And make I feel like every thing. time I come, you got a new setup and a new uh, system that you're trying out. I mean, I think it's part of my 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 shtick. You know what I mean? It's part of the thing that I do uh, to make this this fucking show better and better and better. I'm looking at three. Uh... Three very expensive cameras staring at me. <laughs> Three. Only two are very expensive? Okay. Uh, what, you, what? The battery died? Go get the other one. It's right behind you. Oh, my God. Here we go again. Look, there's a... Uh, After all this tweaking, all this bullshit, we have to fucking deal with, deal with this shit. There's hiccups in any new system. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here and there, we get it. We get it going. Um, so we had a good conversation the other day. I was, what? I was talking about watching, I was watching football and you're like rigged. Everything's rigged. It's all fake. It's mm -hmm. all wrestling. It's all wrestling. Everything Some things are off topic in this podcast. I think you know what, <clears throat> but well, let's continue. <laughs> Some things you got to like leave it for show later, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the, 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 the one thing that we were watching is the Conor McGregor fight went down and basically Conor McGregor goes in, wins in 40 seconds. It mm -hmm. looks like the guy kind of goes down. Not going to lie. A couple shoulders to the face. I mean, yes, granted, it could be very hurtful and harmful. And at the exact same time, it feels like, what the fuck went down? Like, is that rigged? In I think your it could mind, go. Your mind, it, it goes one rigged? of two ways. You know, you know that Connor is the people's favorite. He needs to win. He For can't go in and lose. So you either get a jobber who's just gonna go in there and get his ass kicked, mm -hmm. but then you'd also like it to be in the in the first round. So do you tell him to go down? Do you tell him to make the storybook victory? But in either way, seconds? dude, either way, the cards are already played that it's going to be a Connor win with this fucking guy. I admit that if it goes to the decision, to a decision. It's not interesting. No, and no, he's no, not selling the next it, ticket. It's not even, well, no, it depends. If the fight's a good fight and it goes to the decision, I agree that they skew with Connor, right? Like, fucking the UFC is like, okay, get your shit together. You fucking pick Connor if it goes to a decision. Why you can't say fake a knockout. Why I say it's like wrestling is because in wrestling, they'll, they'll know who they want to win. But how they go about winning, Doesn't some matter. of that goes to the wrestlers. Yes. About like, oh, hey, you're going to do a flip and then I'm going to do a flip. It's about that, you know? <laughs> like, they're going to discuss it among themselves. But for UFC to continue, who does UFC have now besides Conor McGregor? Uh, I mean, there's some people. Khabib is a, is a is a big. I mean, Khabib's fucking huge. He's a he's a, a, a international he's a great. Yeah. So I'm talking he, about a, I'm talking about a white English person, which is who they love. Yeah, I mean they've they've got they're gonna players. go and sell UFC to America with Khabib Muslim can't speak English. I agree that they're, they're not, not using him to America. They're not using him. Yeah. It's that's how racist where it is. There's no two ways around it. Do you think that that's what boils down? Is, he, is this working again? <laughs> no, but that's the reality what, of, the of sports. Are there now? Did you, so just press display on the side over here. That's the reality of sports. When they made a team go to Vegas, did they not give them the first ever draft where you could choose players from every team? Mm -hmm. So now, because of that draft, you might even have a team that's so good that they actually make the Stanley Cup playoffs. <gasps> But let's make sure they make it to the Stanley Cup playoffs and really hype up the town. Like, oh, your team has a chance to win. And how do you do that? You fucking engage the refs. And that's how the NFL, I believe, is rigged. They have the refs. You can't be a ref unless you own a million dollars. Is that true? But you can't, that's true. But you can't. But that's for anti Oh! Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because the blue-collar guy is the guy who's going to, is the one without morality. I mean, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying. But that's what they're trying to say is, oh, because more, they're millionaires. He's more likely to be bought. He could be bought. But yes. a blue collar guy is also more likely to love football and have morality and be shocked I, when I, you ask him to throw a game. Ironically, ironically, I do agree that that is true from a morality perspective. So they have a boys club that are the that are the refs. And I don't you could pull up nonstop where it's like, remember um, Pittsburgh versus Seattle in the playoffs? I think it was like... Uh, is it 06 or something like that, where it made no sense, the calls. The calls all you meant, game... You meant Pittsburgh versus uh, Arizona. No, Pittsburgh versus the Seahawks. It's like a known, Seahawks. famous game. Oh, uh, I think I know which one you're talking Seattle about. Seattle was... They almost burned the fucking town down. Yeah. It was like they just had the worst calls against them all night. On, oh, you're gaining some yards? No. Holding. 
every time. Mm. And that was enough to drive the fans absolutely crazy and say the thing was rigged. And it happens from time to time in different towns. So what would you say is the percentage of chance that all of this is fake? It's not all fake. It's only Certain when you time. need to play the card to so have like the, the like thing. Like 2001, the Patriots win right after 9-11 type, type And deal. then became the dynasty forever after mm. 9-11. But it more has to do with... Um, because NFL, but you can't fake the catch though. Like you, if you like, you throw the ball. The person caught it or they didn't ca- catch it. That affects. No, the game. but you could tell Payne Man to throw it to the you opposite just, team. And was he not on several occasions accused of that? Throwing it to the opposite team. He was accused several times of throwing it to the opposite team. You could you could even Google, you could even YouTube Payne Man throwing it to the opposite team, and then you'll pull up a video and you'll be like, "Ooh, Payne Man's the greatest QB of all time," and he's beautiful thing. We now have. Oh, it's, it's a new system. Display. It's a new system. Oh, so. it's great display. Okay, so find that one, and I'll keep yammering about how sports is fake. Okay, the NFL is a Sunday religion in America. So it's, how does it start? It starts with the national anthem. Everyone goes there, and they hold their chest, and na 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 And they play the fucking Stars and Stripes, which is a song about bombing other nations. That is paid for by the military. And then they go on, and they continue their storyline of, Football, which is... Look, 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 hold on. There's lots of things that are paid for by the military when it comes to American football. Like, even the fact that they do the flyover and they do the whole American anthem and that whole thing is is all part of patriotism. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I do agree that sports in general, not only in football, but football in America specifically, and even football in North, in uh, Europe, let's say... If, it, if national anthems were not in sports, we wouldn't know fuck all. About patriotism, about our country, Well, about, about the anthem! That's true. Would you know O Can- Canada's pretty simple, but we wouldn't know like after the course. Mm. If it wasn't in hockey and shit, we'd be like, uh, well, we sang it in elementary uh, school. Uh, I never did. Really? I, I know I was in French school. I went to French. I went to French emergency school too, but the way they just made us sing it in French and oh, English. No, I never sang the national anthem. Really? No, you went to a real French school. You went to a Quebec school. I guess that's what I'm saying. Yeah, probably. You, you went to. You, you <laughs> They're like, oh, there's a French school, Canada. Nah, nah, <laughs> not even close. Not in this nation. No, yeah, yeah, not in, exactly. Not in the nation of Quebec. <laughs> that is so funny. Okay, Peyton Manning throws to the wrong team. The NFL's plot to bail out Peyton Manning. But it might be too long. It might be like a whole fucking yammering. No, no, we want highlights. We want highlights of him throwing it to the wrong team. And this is, again, highlights. one of the greatest. He's a Hall of Famer, guaranteed. I don't know if he is already, but he's going to be. Uh, and he, he might already be, yeah. And he was used like there's no tomorrow for the NFL. He was used in commercials. In They put him Monday Night Football all the time. But he was the, the But he was the spokesperson. But that's part, that's part of how these things work. Like, no, what happened to Michael Vick? They were like, you're fighting dogs. You go to jail now. He never had a chance to be the spokesperson. And you know how many African-American kids grow up and want to be like but, Mike but Vick? But Russell Wilson is. Nowadays, Russell Wilson got the fucking spokesperson. He's on Campbell's Soup Sting. McNabb was on Campbell's Soup Sting. Oh, yeah, McNabby. <laughs> Don't you remember his mom? They did those like Campbell soup, whatever it was. the Philly days or something? Chunky soups or whatever it was. It was a- okay, but he was not as big as Peyton Manning. Clearly not, but Peyton Manning was better. True. But Peyton Manning was also... <laughs> you. No, but he was the he was a spokesperson. Growing up, totally. Peyton Manning was a spokesperson. He was selling One, cars, he's still a everything. He's legit still a spokesperson. And I'm pretty sure they don't call up Peyton Manning's agent. They call up the NFL. And they're like, hey, we'd like to do this campaign with da 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 And they're like, we have the perfect guy for you. He's Peyton Manning. And as long as Peyton Manning Just throws the games that we want him to throw, he'll keep getting those cards. Mm. And did he get one Super Bowl? Two. I think he was promised. Two. I think he was Two. promised one Super Bowl. <laughs> so for those who don't know, I'm a huge football fan, and Peyton Manning is my favorite player of all time. So he did get two Super Bowls. How do we never pulled up the highlight? I tried to, but I didn't see anything fake. I didn't, I didn't see. I mean, I didn't see. Let me, let me just, let me see if I could get it on Google. Oh, Google is the Google the. Is the NFL fake? No, um, fuck, what's a good name? Because the rigged isn't the best word. Because you should just write highlights, and then you'll have highlights. And you'll actually be able to watch one of the highlights and be like, mm. Rigged. Is the NFL rigged? But obviously one of the best... NFL is rigged. 100%, 100% proof. <laughs> yes, best video. I made. love... There's some dude in his fucking living room, you know what I mean? Like He's raging, bro. He's raging. He just found out that wrestling is fake, and he's absolutely upset. What are you trying to say? Stone Cold didn't beat Undertaker at SummerSlam 97. Don't worry. We got, so he's now, they're just going to show a bunch of shit. Is this against the Panthers? See, this is the thing. I don't yet hear it. We have to get, the, we have to head the headphones in for us to hear this. Uh, 
Ah, oh, fuck it. The fuck system is not ready yet. The system is we not ready yet. Me. No, but at least I could show things on the fucking screen. At least I could pull stuff Steelers, up. right? Steelers. Steelers, Patriots, playoffs. Rigged. 100% proof. Steelers, Patriots. Playoffs. Yeah, it's not It's not the Super Bowl. It's to lead up to the Super Bowl. Actually, no, it wasn't. It was the final game of the season. This guy catches the football outside of the end zone and runs into the end zone, and they ruled it not a catch because he did make a football move while crossing the plane. Ref steals uh, uh, out of playoffs. Yeah, this is the one you're talking about. Is that Peyton? Rigged games. No, but this is not. This is against... Okay, yeah, but it's the whole game? LA Chargers. No, it's not the whole game. Okay, this is LA Chargers. There's so many. It's nonstop. If you really want to have some fun one night, Proof watch. the NFL is rigged. But who is that? Is that against the... Chargers. Dude. It was against Chargers. Oh, oh no, no. Proof NFL is rigged. Patriots versus Steelers. Yeah, this is one of the best ones. He literally catches the football, runs into the end zone. They're like, no, that's, that's not a touchdown or a catch. <laughs> Next play, Roethlisberger throws a pick to the other team. Patriots. Return it. Touchdown. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Here. He never made a football move. I don't know. I just feel He's like... He's touched so, after the fact, too. I just the feel best. like there would, be, there would have to be so many things. You just saw so many things on YouTube no, where they're I like... I didn't see anything. I didn't, I didn't hear nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like for that to be the case, for it to really be rigged, it, it would require... So many moving pieces that I don't know. No, that but that's that the beauty of football and baseball, the two most rigged sports of all time. The moving pieces stop and reset after every fucking play. And that's how you can rig it. It's a lot harder when it's hockey and it's like, oh my God, it's going everywhere and oh, call up Toronto and was that a goal and give them a penalty. It's a little bit harder. So you could skew more in certain sports. In hockey, what they do to rig it is they... They ruin your momentum. They throw you on the pow on the on the penalty kill, yeah. and that really crushes a team's momentum. And you can give the other team an edge. And yeah, but you you can't rig the game. Like you cannot force the puck to go into the net. No, the but other I team think if you remember when that you weren't allowed to go through the crease. Yes, that I was crazy. think that was a time where you could rig it because you could just not, and there was no challenges. So they but saw again, it. They saw it on the replay that some guys going through the crease, but they want that team to score. They don't say anything. They say fuck all. But oh, cre dude, a foot in the crease. You no, know, often that happened that year. Are it you was me madness. This is why the Canadians suck? The Canadians have Ilya Kovalchuk now. <laughs> Kovalchuk. So uh, they're, gonna they're, gonna, <laughs> they're gonna be rigged. They're gonna get rigged pretty hard here. <laughs> they're about to get rigged pretty hard. No, but if you're Gary Bettman, he's the CEO or whatever, the GM, yeah, the GM. of the league. Mm -hmm. You want the league to succeed, and the sum is greater than the pieces of its parts or whatever the yeah, fuck yeah, the saying yeah. is and in all sports it's like that you want look if you talk to the owners it's like do you want attendance to be up or do you want your team to be a seventh in the league mm -hmm. you want attendance to be up period you want people to care about football i don't give a fuck if i'm 10th or second or third it's either your first or your last and all the rest suck but, because but you don't, don't get you good think, draft picks don't you think that if the canadians were to win every like 20 years it would be awesome for the for the sport as a whole. Yes, but Montreal sells out every fucking night. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but there's there's waves of it. You don't think like hockey is lower right now than it used to be in Vegas, and that's why they made them go to the Stanley Cup. No, but in, St. In Louis, Montreal, how's it doing? Oh, I'm Montreal. losing some I'm losing some ticket sales no, over no, here. No, all right, Montreal, let them win the Stanley even Cup. Even Montreal people aren't watching the game the same way they used to. If they lose, maybe, is that just my consciousness? No, if they start losing, people kind of tune out halfway through the season. Yeah, people are like, ah, but they're in it at the beginning of the season. The hype is always there. And if they, now they got Ilya Kochuk, so the hype's back again, and people mm. watch the games, even if they're a 500 team. So you know people who are like actively watching games, because I don't know. I watched the game after. I haven't watched a game all season in fucking years, and now they have Ilya Kochuk, and I'm like, Let's see how right, I'm and what happens? He scores two goals. Ilya Kochuk. <laughs> it's amazing. He's great. Yeah. But that's like, that's a different thing to watch. That's a, that's a story of like, and it's, it's an inspirational story. It's about a but guy who they thought sucked, and put him, they, they cut him. They cut a first draft guy, a guy who was drafted first overall, an all-star, mm -hmm. going to be a Hall of Famer. They cut him. The Habs pick him up for nothing. Now he has something to prove. He was just cut by this team who said he sucked. I suck? But now he's in fucking Montreal where everyone's going to wear your jersey night after night and, and rage and drink beer. He's going to be amazing. He's going to play with a fire you've never seen before, and I'd like to see that. Mm -hmm. For my own, you know, for my own reasons that... Uh, 
anyone anyone who has that kind of fire and determination, it's contagious. So you're better off seeing it. And if the eyes see it, the brain comprehends what it looks like, and then you can somehow get it too. Mm. And that's why I wanted to tune in to see someone really, you know, strive and fight for it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think sports is like the ultimate ma- male man's drama. Like it's yeah. like it's the ultimate. It really is such a beautiful thing to witness from my perspective to to see people practice and practice and practice and put in so much time and preparation for understanding the roles, particularly in football. I really I really do enjoy football. It is less free flowing. It is much more calculated with lots of moving parts and lots of 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 elements that I think is super, super beautiful. And then it just creates some of them like for me, memory moments. You were there with me, actually. Went to the game when it, we were, the Habs were losing 5-0 mm-hmm. against the Rangers. It was 5-0 in the middle of the second period. If we, we go out, I remember at the, after the first, we went out and smoked a joint or whatever. And we were like, oh, no, they were getting crushed like 3-0 already. Halfway through the, se- the game, they're losing 5-0, and then they come back and win 6-5. Yeah, I don't I think those games are rigged. For, no, me either. That's but, just the beauty of sports where momentum can shift, and, and you're at like, the mercy of the momentum. But as a memory in your life, mm-hmm. I will never forget that. I will never forget being at that game, no matter how. Like, dude, we've gotten high. Uh, more than anybody I've ever been high with, you're the number one mm-hmm. <laughs> candidate. I don't remember most of the nights. Like some nights are memorable, some nights are more funny, whatever it is. There's tons of moments, but moments like that in sports are irreplaceable in my memory. Like I was talking about the the fourth and two when I was at, I went to the game with my buddy Mitch, who's a Patriots fan. And I went to the the Indianapolis versus Patriots game, mm-hmm. and I used to go every year for for a few years in a row. Right, so I go to this game and the Colts are losing by 14 points or whatever, 17 points in the in the fourth quarter, 11 minutes left or something. They come back and they win. And it was it was a game where uh, Bill Belichick and Brady and whatever went for it on fourth and two. We stopped them. And then we march in and Reggie Wayne scores a fucking beautiful, you know, beautiful touchdown kind of thing. Again, I will never forget that game. Mm-hmm. There's something so, you know what it really is? It's, it's not just what happened in the game. It's the experience of the entire thing when you're in the crowd specifically. When you're in the crowd and everyone erupts like there's an emotion that just ripples through the entire consciousness of that of that stadium in that moment and then not only the consciousness but but even everyone who's watching it's like a sunday night football game in that in that case for example there's so much collective juice and power in that moment Mm -hmm. and there's just something incredible about that even the super bowl like and there's no way and there's no way that that game is fake that's just another beautiful drama which however it plays out it's going to be beautiful yeah if they lose at home if they win at home it's going to be great yes but what what starts to happen is i was a person who really loved sports growing up and when i started to find out that there are underhanded things that happen in this world and they do touch on things like sports Oh, they, that's when it that's when I get upset and that's when I start to write it all off where it's like if if you're going to have those those games are real but if you're going to fuck up the Super Bowl what's even the point of playing in this league? Yeah. And that's why some NFL players, basketball players, football, all kinds of athletes got to that level and some of them just disappear. You never see they get to the highest level, they don't win and they quit and they retire and they never fucking play again mm. because you stole you told them that the world's flat basically. You told them something so fucking ground shaking that why am I even here if it's just going to be fucking wrestling? Why did I train? Why did I do all those things? And they can't take it where other ones kind of realize it's a job. Fuck it. It's a job. So speaking of wrestling, one of the biggest things that I, I really admire of you is your ability to in, in, embody and create characters. And you and I had a whole conversation about different characters and filming these different characters. Obviously, anybody who follows your Instagram stories knows of some of the characters my personal favorite is Corporate Louder Wolf because <laughs> I think he's fucking, he's fucking hilarious. I don't know why, what it is. I don't know what it is deep seated inside of me that loves Corporate Louder Wolf, but I think it's just, I think it's probably because he's one of the characters in my own mind that I do listen to. You relate to Corporate Louder Wolf. That's the only re- fucking reason that you were there, that you I would know, like him. But I, I, but I don't like, I, I mean, I guess I could relate to Jojo. I guess I could relate to, I relate to the Chuck too. I do like, I do like the Chuck. Um, but there is something hilarious about Corporate Ladder Wolf that just gets me every time. Mm-hmm. And well, corporate Ladder Wolf is just an entity that keeps telling you to do the thing that's good for business, even right. though you clearly don't want to do it. Yeah. Essentially, and in your version of business is the queen's face, essentially. But you, you, you make fun of it as saying, like, I doing, doing it for the queen's face, which is doing it for money. And our mm-hmm. Canadian dollars, our Canadian money, the queen's face is on, on our $20 bill, for example, right? Mm-hmm. So 
Um, I mean, talk to me about character development. When did you when did you first realize you were actually developing characters in the first place? Uh, I think it's when I started doing street art. I realized that if I did it in a way similar to wrestling, because I just think that it's all wrestling. Okay, this is a fundamental thing that you have to understand. I think it's all wrestling. Everything's for And show. if you understand wrestling, then you will destroy anything you do. Now, when you're talking about wrestling for context here, you're talking about like WWE, meaning everything's a show. There's a script to the way that things are. I'm talking about like if you want to, if you want to really hone it in, up. we're talking about Hulk Hogan. Yes. The beginning of Hulk Hogan, what it was before and what it becomes after and what and who Hulk Hogan is. If you understand that aspect of it, mm -hmm. then you will understand how to slay in any business. Mm -hmm. What happened before Hulk Hogan is they're just fucking, I don't know, they're slamming some guys around. They think they're tough. Blah, blah, blah. Hulk Hogan comes in and he becomes the ultimate tough guy. I'm the toughest one. Me, <laughs> Hulk Hogan. And and they had to, they fucking, he's, it's sold. The idea sold. He's the toughest one. So then he had to keep winning. Yeah. Because he's just, he keeps saying he's the strongest one. So fuck it. But then he, eventually we have to make him, they have to make him lose. Eventually, no, Hulk Hogan wins the same way forever. Okay, yeah. because back then they're just bringing you to a gymnasium. Uh, it's on the ticket. Hulk Hogan's my first time to see Hulk Hogan. He's gonna do exactly what I need him to do. It was less the televised. leg drop. It was also less. Yes. It was less popular on television. And that dude, moment. he goes through the whole eighties with the uh, take your vitamins, yeah. say your prayers, yeah. and work out. So the show could be the same by moving the show in different towns. They had similar consistency outcomes. is very important. Yeah. That's number one. Consistency yeah. is very important, and knowing what you stand for. Yeah. He stood for something. Mm -hmm. The other ones were like selfish and like, eh, it didn't make sense. He stood for like, if you fucking, archetype. if you, if you're consistent and you say your prayers and you take your vitamins, you'll be as strong as me. Six, eight, 300 mm. pounds, bro. Nobody, if they could say their prayers night and day, they're not going to be six, eight. He's kind of like a, a modern day, like a real life. Well, I'd say real life, a character, almost like a Popeye's. Yes. Yeah. He was, he was, he was like, like Popeye. Popeye. He's a yeah. real life cartoon character. Yeah. He's a weird, so, uh, right. What happens is he's a cartoon character and then eventually people don't buy the store anymore. It's not real. Mm -hmm. And then he has to make it more real. Mm -hmm. And then he becomes a villain. Mm -hmm. So he has contrast to his character. And that's where, if you can understand that, you can understand how this is how you have to play it. You can only be a, a good person for so long before people don't buy it anymore. Okay. Then you have to sway and you have to show them that you're real and like you're upset and it's hard to pay the bills and da -la 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 -la. and then they'll be like, oh, okay, thank God. I thought he was a guy who gets it all. And, you know, they, it's so they easy. Stop relating. They, they stop, stop relating because their life's hard. Yeah. But secretly, your bank account could be fucking gushing with blood. It doesn't matter. You fucking start saying it's rough out here and oh, my God. Mm. And you go down into the bank. You just fucking you crash, burn and die. And then from there, they do the same thing all Everyone over again. Phoenix. You do it all over again and you climb to the top until you feel that it's not, uh, it's not, I'm feeling, it's not feeling so good. And you go right back down again. And, all and the, the more you do that, characters. the highest you can get. Yeah. You can go to the fucking, dude, when they. Every major character in wrestling has done that, including like The Rock, for example. The, the Rock, Rock, The Rock, Rock was like the people. He was the next guy the who, who really did it. The Rock was the next guy who did but it. But when he was the people's yeah. champion, when he was the people's champion, it was ironic. He was actually a villain. Yes. He was saying he was the people's uh, champion. But that was the joke. That was the, ir uh, the irony. And then they, what happened is they start to believe him. Yeah. <laughs> he was oh the people's God, champion. The <laughs> and then he, he became the people's champion. He went and did movies. And when he came back, nobody wanted him to be the people's champion. They literally probably booed him when he came back. And he had to be the fucking villain again. So he was the villain again. And then he fucking worked his way from being the villain. Saying like he's singing songs about how your town sucks. Comes mm -hmm. to your town, Arkansas, where the women are fat. And he sings a song about how your town sucks. And eventually people kind of like it. And he sure. gets to be the champion again. So, dude, they literally had Hulk Hogan, like 67, come back in playing the good guy role. And the, the roof, they can't even keep the roof on the building because he just did that enough times. <laughs> He's 67. He can't even run. Yeah. And they're like, yes, <laughs> Hulk Hogan, leg drop. <laughs> I used to love Austin 316. When, when Austin, uh, Stone Cold uh, Steve Austin would come out and he would do the stutter, I fucking loved it every time. I remember going to, I, the one and only time I ever went to the WWE, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin had did like six stutters. I think, was I there with you? 
I don't know. Maybe. He he fights the big show and he gives he gives everyone a stunner. But he but he stunners it like over. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He went out of the ring and then went back and in go. and stunned and it went out and it went like he did it four times. That's what you I, wanted to see. That's I, what you paid to see. No, but the fact <laughs> he went up the ramp four times and did that, I died. I was like, I hey, couldn't because you couldn't. They just kept giving. It's like. They gave it's you what you wanted. It's a comedian, exactly. It's a comedian hitting the same punchline over and over and over again. And he tested it in other towns, eh? Right? Like, he tested 100%. it in other towns, and this is a dark show. It's a house show, so it's not televised. So that routine, he's done probably every single time you're not having a camera on him, and it's back in the day before cell phones. Mm. He's doing it every night. He before, knows it works. The and world was different before cell phones, too. Because that business is about getting a reaction out of people. They know it's fake. Yeah. But it's all about getting a rise out but of for someone. for a while, not everyone knew it was fake. For rise, we grew they, up. We grew up in the '90s where we knew it was fake. We grew up. We grew up where it, where there was still a little bit of questions around it. But I do think that we started to. We I mean, the moves knew. definitely hurt. I'll tell you that yeah. much. The moves fucking hurt if you do it to someone. Yeah. By the but, way, if you're listening to this, you can let us know who your favorite wrestler is, and we'll actually see it. And somebody asked us about the 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 cheating sign stealing uh, thing. What what do we think about that? The what sign? Hey, what do you all think about the Astro situation with the cheating sign stealing? Did you do you know about this? So the Astros got caught cheating they, they basically set up a camera at the back of the mound almost like where you where you see a picture like yeah. what you would see on tv what they would do is they would they put a, a dugout tv and they would look at the signal the sign signal that oh the, and then eventually the read would, what what they're trying no, to say. and then they would they would have like a bat up against the garbage and they would hit the bat like two three times up against the garbage to let the the batter know what the pitch was if you're not cheating you're not trying you know what i mean <laughs> so if you're that's not different cheating, that's not i don't think that's rigging yeah. Rigging is. I mean, it is rigging. Rigging they is. Rigged, they literally Jimmy rigged a fucking camera. But in that's the their own stadium. Yeah. That's their own stadium, right? I think they was only doing it in their own stadium. Welcome I don't to know, Houston, I don't baby. Enough about ba- yeah. Welcome to Houston. Yeah. Where they cheat. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. But when it comes down to like I the Patriots they, I, with Inflate Gate, and yeah. then they get caught, and then what do they lose? Nothing. Fuck all. No. Well, they lost Brady for four games or something like that. I think they lost him for four games. Did they lose the, Brady the for real season, for the next season? For yeah, the first four games, he was banned or something like that. It was four games in the next season. They lost it for the first four. Did games. they lose draft picks? I think they lost a draft pick too. Because yeah. they were filming. They got caught cheating multiple times. Let's be real. They oh, were caught totally. filming the defensive team. Totally. And totally. and the things that they were losing was like, look, th- that could mean that all your wins don't count. Oh uh, yeah, can you just give us like a hundred thousand dollars and uh, don't do that again? They made millions. So that's when I think it becomes rigged. When it's like they were caught. The league is now made aware of it, and the league doesn't take a stand. That's like, well, maybe you knew, maybe you knew about this, maybe you were, you were okay with this, so the Patriots could win, and uh, we can continue bombing Iraq and stuff. Because mm-hmm. so there was an investigation. But in baseball, there's nothing new. That if you could also look up the the Black Sox, which are the White Sox in, I believe, the 20s. So he where, was suspended without pay for four games in the upcoming season of his involvement based on substantial and credible evidence. Brady knew Patriots employees were deflating footballs and then blah, blah, blah. The Patriots were also fined $1 million and had to forfeit their first-round pick in 2016 and fourth-round pick in 2017. That's a pretty big one. Yeah, I mean, losing a first-round draft pick. But again, they, they pro- possibly win the Super Bowl because of it. Pretty big. Yeah. I mean, you know. The smallest of advantages do play out in this game. A and, game of inches. And what I want to bring up again is like in the NFL, uh, a lot of guys were caught in the 80s throwing games or do um, mostly QBs. And you were saying that like if they have a million dollars, then they, they aren't subject to fucking cheating. Mm-hmm. Million dollars means you're going to spend a million dollars. And how they got those fucking guys to throw games is they were addicted to drugs. The athletes were addicted to drugs and eventually... They ran out of fucking money, and how are you going to get your drug money? You're going to mm. throw the game. The bookie would... Well, the mafia would literally be, if you want money, we will loan it to you. Speaking throw the game, and I'll be able to place a bet, and I won't lose money. I'll give you money, and I'll make money. So a single player play, does... does it. It's known. It's like, they after retirement, a lot of guys came out and said they were, I mean, they were fucked up. They were on things. steroids, all kinds of drugs. They had the... There's a, on Netflix, there's a new, uh, the new show with uh, Aaron Hernandez. Who uh, he got well, he got convicted of murder and a bunch of stuff. Long, long story short, but he apparently had like one of the most concussed brains of all time. I think it's CET or whatever it's called. It's a like a disease where essentially you have like you're, you're basically having kind of erratic behavior and you and you have massive mood swings and all these things mm-hmm. basically due to trauma to your brain. Yeah. Uh, in his case, a frontal lobe. But they would they, most NFL players 
even in college specifically, they were juicing them up with all these fucking things that were just like rid the pain, like anti anti you know inflammatories and and pain you know pain uh, uh, suppressors and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a fucking real thing, and it's it's fucking crazy. Like they that aren't they, the wisest people. They're just like you know. Wait, Some of them are tools like, for the team, you know? They all are in a way, but but they're also playing a game that they love, and I understand that. Like, man, I loved fucking playing soccer when I was playing soccer. I loved playing football when we played football. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I didn't play it professionally. I didn't play it. That wasn't my, that wasn't my thing. But it's not the like time. they're fucking, like, uh, priestly. You know what I mean? They are subject to flaws of morality, yeah. and that's where... The game even, could be sued. Even Breezy, even Breezy, the fuck is the subject of flaws of morality. That's that's the funniest part of all of this. <laughs> yeah. But what we were mostly harping on is that when you get on having a personality and a personality that shines through, that's when the organization can can actually build around you. That's why Peyton Manning was used yeah. so well. And he actually, even McGregor, if you think about, and all, that's whenever going back to it, McGregor is wrestling. Yes, he is one hundred percent. I don't know if he watches it. And fucking plans it all to be like a wrestler, but he's 100 percent a wrestler. He never shuts his mouth. He's throwing ability, chairs at things. Yeah. He has the, the billy, billy walk. Strut. He's got things that are associated. That's so with Ric Flair. He's wearing clothes that's always like super rich. Yeah. At the beginning, when he first started making money, it was all about showing how money, much money, money was made. The same thing. It's all they're 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 embodying characters. Whether the sport is real or not, whether it happens or not, what they are doing is playing a character, and that yeah. in and of itself is, is larger the art. than life. It's actually more impressive in some ways. Than, than their their physical ability or talent in some way. Well, that's what differentiates you from the from the rest of the pack. Well, the, you know why it's more impressive because it's not even it's not even known. It's like w- there's millions of people who watch the fight, cowboy versus fucking Connor, but they do not see the the character that is being played. Like mm-hmm. they do not see the PR move. Well, no, sub- that he made it subconsciously. Being subconsciously, they do, they do see it. Subconsciously, everyone sees it. But it's a fucking cowboy, a guy who's literally constantly wearing a cowboy hat. Versus loudmouth Conor McGregor, who's not being so loud, although he still was loud. But he wasn't that loud. He wasn't that loud because he had bad, had a bunch of bad PR leading up to it. He had yeah. two lo- bad lot. Lo- oh, now he's going to be no. It, but now he's going to be loud again. Now he's going to be loud again. Yes. Yeah. Totally. And that's what the UFC needed. Yes. And why they were so upset that he was leaving. It's like they helped make him. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the backstab move. Is that like. Same thing with Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan made the WWF, but the WWF existed. So mm-hmm. they made you, and then when you you think you're so big and you leave to go do movies, they're pissed, bro, because they helped make you, and then you just left them in the dirt. And that's why when the federal indictments came around, they basically, like, what happened was um, they went after Vince McMahon because Ted Turner owned WCW, the competition, and he also owned CNN. He basically ran that guy through the mud, his competition, said that he was doing steroids, had him federally indicted, Ran it on the news and had him federally indicted and had Hulk Hogan testify that he was given drugs by Vince McMahon. So imagine all the try and take down the WWF to take down the competition. And that's why after he got away with it, WWF became what it became, which is like absolutely gung ho crazy. Because he because underneath it all, he was being attacked by this guy. So he had to be like, fuck it. We're going to have transvestites and we're going to have guns and suck it. And well, now there's a lot more female wrestling. Female wrestling is a huge thing in the WWE now, it seems. I, I know nothing about the WWE anymore. But why? Well, there's a reason like why a, like wrestling is not in the popular culture as much anymore because they don't have, they don't have The Rock. They had John Cena. John Cena was huge. And then John Cena went to go do movies. And now maybe oh, like, sure. it's almost like because wrestling's so big, they come and wrestle for a year or two. And as soon as they get big, they go do movies, and then wrestling has no one. They constantly have no one. It's literally a bunch of people who are like, I want to be a wrestler, but they don't understand the, the character development that you need to have, the charisma that you need to build. It's not about going to the gym and learning the moves. It's really about like half your time you should be practicing mic skills mm-hmm. and being able to be charismatic. And the same is true for every single athlete. They don't let them celebrate in the NFL Super whack because that year where they were celebrating touchdowns, craziest. People loved it. Crazy. People were googling and youtubing after. Oh, that, what did Ocho Cinco? Yeah, and think yeah. of Ocho Cinco. And was think huge. of fucking Ocho Cinco. Ocho Cinco was huge. How big is 
How many sales? He probably had a percentage of uh, jersey sales. Everyone does. Okay, so you, I think I, I believe that it's part of the thing that if people buy your jersey, you get more. Like, there's something in your contract where that's so. For did sure Ocho thing. Cinco not sell the most jerseys ever compared to any other Bengal? Guaranteed, he destroyed compared to any other Bengal. He was a genius, absolutely. and he raced a horse. The fact that he changed his name to Ocho Cinco in and of itself is because hilarious. they wouldn't let him fucking have Ocho Cinco back. What if I legally change even, it? I don't even know his name anymore. Chad Johnson. That's Chad Johnson. That's it. <laughs> I couldn't even literally He's I couldn't a even genius. remember his name. He raced a horse. Cinco. Because what what is Chad Johnson? The fastest guy in the NFL. Mm. Sprint B line on that C B. No. And that's why he wants you to remember that he's super fast. I'm gonna race a horse. No, I, I mean look, it, part of that is news anchors and the people who do these things doing a good job at essentially giving the name to a particular character, right? Like so, for example, like when Chris Johnson was uh, ran for 2K, 2, 2, 2K yards, right? They called him CJ2K or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And, and so they spur on. They're good at like. No, somebody... but Chad Johnson came up with Ultra Cinco. No, no, that 100%. So but there's a difference of like waiting for someone to da 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 and being the absolute mastermind I, who comes to... up with it who literally... first and then the other people start repeating it. Yes. There's a huge difference in that. Yeah. And that's why like the other guy, I don't even know the fuck you're talking about. But Chad Johnson, I'll go to the grave remembering that fucking genius yeah. who was just a wide receiver. That's all he was. And Terrell Owens. I'll never forget Terrell Owens. Why? What it sticks out in your mind for, for Terrell Owens? Remember when he put the fucking football on the star oh, yeah. of Dallas yeah, and he the, gets the whole team runs after yeah, him? That's the, probably the most famous one, right? Yeah, because he's literally like... And then he would say some shit. Because it, it's such a stupid act. He's literally just going to your star on your field yeah. and said... And but, celebrating. Yeah, but it was a symbolic But he thing knew he'd it. get a rise out of you. Yeah. He knew he'd get a rise out of the whole... So instead of just doing this in your end zone, he runs to the center and tries to do it there so the whole crowd erupts. And, and, that's, and, and that's wrestling. And, and, and you know who's more wrestling than anybody else in the real world? Fucking Trump. Trump is the ultimate, ultimate wrestler. He's the ultimate. He's the ultimate, like, everything is laced in gold. He's Floyd Mighty Mayweather as a real person. I'm going to build a wall. The wall's going to be so beautiful. It's going to be so it's high. Big, it's huge. It's going to be huge. It's, a, it's huge. It's, it's a big, <laughs> the biggest wall. The best wall. You know what I mean? Like, it's so hilarious that that's exactly what he does yep. over and over and over again. But that's, but that's what they were doing anyways. And that's they were doing want. that. They just weren't doing it at his level. His level yeah. is next level. His level. You want a wall? I'll give you the best wall. The best wall. Is there a wall? The best probably wall. not. <laughs> There's probably not even a wall. And he probably I mean, still goes around saying it's going to be the best wall. I mean, they're building something, but but the but I agree with you that really I'm sure Bush said that he was going to build a wall, but he surely. never said it was going to be the best wall you've ever seen. He just didn't and stake it be- on that. Yeah, he didn't stake his presidency on something of that nature. Every president seems to pick a particular topic and then goes after that topic powerfully as much as possible. Yeah, but they don't they right? don't like, take like it to JFK, his level. If I say JFK, what do you say? What mm. happened to Joe Biden? He became sleepy, creepy Joe Biden because of Trump. True, because of Trump. And he didn't even have a campaign. Yeah. He like, I'm going to, I'm going to try. You're sleepy and you're creepy. Uh, done. <laughs> yeah, running. done. I will say he's still running, but. but He's still running? Yeah. You never hear about him? Fuck all. He's done. He got destroyed by a nickname, high school nickname. No, what, 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 even. Trump had the best nickname because, for everyone. Because he, they, had, he had like uh, uh, whatever Jed or whatever, like a little... Sweaty Jed or something like no, that. No, it was something for you funnier. It was... Anyway, the, he had he had like all these nicknames for each and every person. And what do they... And, and, what? and even Hillary Crook stuck. Like that's, that, that, that took, man. That, that fucking was And fire. they think that they're too dignified to go to that level. That's their, their mentality is, oh, I would never stoop to that level. And you're getting destroyed. Because that's the way that America is communicating. If you are not willing to go there, then you're not, you're not at his level. He's it just at funny. a genius level. It is funny that that is how America communicates. Yes, he knows. Time. That's why when he was running in Republican, he was like, uh, racist, sexist things. And they're like, <laughs> da! And then he gets to the, the full nation, the full nation, and they're like, did you really say those things? Like, no, I never said those things. Yeah. We have it on camera. No, no, no. no. Those things, uh, sleepy, creepy joke. But, but that, that literally makes it even more crazy. Because that's... Then it drives you nuts. It drives you nuts. And you talk about it, and, and he's getting it. a rise out of you. Exactly. And the more of a over rise he gets in this corner, that's it'll so only true. make a rise in that corner. Yeah. The and, ones who hate you will just make the ones who love you more. And that's all, that's all it really boils down to is it's everything is 5149. Like, even, like, no matter how much I loved 
fucking let's say i loved um uh, uh what's his i was gonna call him Socko, but what uh fucking mankind. mankind yeah i used to love mankind right i hated the rock i didn't like the rock didn't love mankind but for every person who loved mankind there was another person who loved the rock and hated mankind of course there was always there's always you need that them. balance you need them but why is it isn't it I find it so wild that everything is that that nuanced, like that close to the. And middle. again, it's because we get back into sports tribalism. That's why sports is so powerful and why it's used for the army because it's tribalism and the army is tribalism. Yeah. So because they're perfectly the same thing, it's associating to one place versus the other and whatever. We're team it is. blue, baby, and they're team red. And it's like that's just happening on a on a small level. But if you buy into that, then I can sell you that bigger one where we drop bombs on them so much easier, mm. so much easier. Because you want to be on the winning team, mm -hmm. and we're the winning team. We have the best bombs, and da da da. And just that alone, like I you feel America, like you're safe. You feel you're gonna join the army and not die. I think because America it's the best. as a whole, even America as a brand, it is a brand. It is that? Yeah, it really is that. Like it's just. We're the best. Freedom. Even though, even though, like, uh, you know, like, and even if so you're American funny. and you're listening, you have to admit, some Americans are really fucking dumb when it comes to other things that happen in the world. Oh, of course. They're just not aware of international things at all. But it's and it's that because is because of the stupid brand that you buy into. Well, that's it's like, we're culture, the best. Their culture feeds them America. Yeah. Like, I know more about America than I know about Canada. If I had to, if every, almost everything we spoke about, NFL, fucking wrestling, all the shit. Not to say it doesn't include Canadians, but they're all American. Things. Yeah, but that's also because, like, we're involved in the fucking British Empire that, you know, Queen's like, face. the Queen's face. It has to do with, like, the British, <laughs> if we're going to get into, like, the true nature of the empire, we're in the financial, we're part of the financial empire. Yeah. London. Yeah. And we're one of the resources of the London financial branch, and the U.S. is the army branch. But it feels The like one that is made to be the controller of the world. Yeah, tougher. For, because Britain used to be the one through the Navy. Now they use the Navy for, the, for ships and for trade, where the U.S.'s Navy is legit for the war mm -hmm. around the world. And they, they're in cahoots with uh, Britain, whether you like it or not, and Rome is the religious aspect of it. And they're all in cahoots. They still are. But Rome seems to have lost power in some ways. But they're still the same families. Is it not every president has been related to the queen? And even Trump? I mean, something like that. Yeah, I mean. Even I, Obama? Every single one has been related to the queen. That's a huge coincidence. Don't you feel like I'm right not now related with, to the with queen? Prince, fair. <laughs> Prince, Prince Harry and, and, and Meghan Markle, for example, leaving the royalty. And coming here. Yeah. So does that not feel like the the hierarchy of that system is starting to decay a little bit i think like the wheels are coming off on i on think the it's a perfect wrestling move because what happens he's leaving the queen well we're gonna strip you of all your titles and you're gonna get none of the public funds first of all why are you talking about public funds mm -hmm. they're like oh you're on the greatest welfare system of all time okay Congrats. Congratulations for you. They're and he's going to have to make it on his own. Yeah, they still have a ton of money from years past. This is the whole, this is the whole story. They're going to have to make it on their own. And now they're going to come and be celebrity. She's already going to be the she's voice. She's celebrity. She's going to be the voice of the next Disney princess. Oh, really? Yes. Is this a thing? This is a real thing. Oh, I did not know that. She's going to be the voice of a Disney. Oh, kids, don't you just want to grow up and be on public funds your whole life? Disney princess, but she'll be, they're basically setting them up to be Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. And then because they're against the queen, but technically the queen anyways, this you'll love wrestling. them. You'll love them. This is wrestling. This is the plan. You think that this is a wrestling move. This is a wrestling move. This is the ultimate wrestling move. Because, you, because look, in Canada, they actually are trying to get rid of the Senate. Okay. The Senate is basically, we have unelected officials. So if you're an American, consider like your congressman not being elected. That's what our Senate is. Mm -hmm. We have rich people who are appointed for life and they technically make all the rules in Canada. And the people that we vote for tell us what they've decided. There's a lower house of commons and there's an upper house of lords. And the upper house of lords are unelected. In Canada, we're trying to chip away at that because we got rid of it in the provincial sector, but we're trying to get rid of it at the federal level. The only way to really stop all that is to just, uh, just wool over the eyes that the queen is a celebrity and whatever the fuck their names are, Harry and whatever the fuck yeah. her names are, they're celebrity. And if you love that celebrity, then you kind of love the queen. 
So that's how they're going to try and garner some sort of support. That's the play that I'm kind of witnessing happen. And you don't think it's more from a, just a genuine thing of like they don't want to be a part of the puppeteering. Maybe, maybe they but why are they on are the news of... every fucking night? You go on now, well, you're because, on because it's fucking wild to think that you are the prince and the princess. No, you're and not to, to denounce that. You're not though. You're I... sixth in line. You're literally like a third tier wrestler that they don't even want to put on the big show. What do you say? They're sixth in line. They're sixth in line. Right? He's not gonna get fuck all ever. That's Who's next. Oh, it's an older brother. The other brother. Yeah, well, he's older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm sure like Queen Elizabeth has a son. She's a grandma. There's the, yeah, there's but the dad she, who's the dad. She's dad. a grandma. Yeah. So there's the guy who who was dating the girl who died, who they killed. Diana. Diana. Yeah. There's that guy. And yeah. then his sons later. He's not getting it. It's so far down the line that they're like, hey, what are we gonna do with this fucking peon? We're gonna put him in Canada. And now you go on YouTube and you have to fucking hear about these losers. And yeah. they're gonna be part of our culture. Because she is on her money, and they they need to start infiltrating us like they do in Britain with the storyline. Because in Britain, they, they have paparazzi follow them fucking every two seconds because, like, ooh, they pay for that shit. They probably own the fucking sun and whatever tabloids are running their stories. Mm -hmm. So they're going to make the same thing happen here and make little girls love Disney princesses. I did not know she was getting the role for princess. Mm-hmm. Disney's whole... Disney was probably paid by the queen to make, like... Because at the beginning, like, at the beginning of the Disney stories, the queen is evil. If you look back at Snow White, Snow White is a common woman who's so beautiful, and the queen is so upset that there's a common woman that's more beautiful than her, so she devises a plan to kill her. Yeah. That's the original stories of princesses and, and fucking queens in Disney stories. And then all of a sudden, the princess is the fucking, is the, is the one, mm -hmm. is, the her is the heroine or whatever. And that's after the fact. That's like not how it starts. It starts after Disney gets it's huge. It's amazing They're how used we as are like, affected by all these little things that we've picked up over our course of our lifetime. When we were young. When we were young. When we were young. You get them when they're young. Because yeah. if you embed that archetype in their mind that a princess is, a, is, is, is beautiful and the good best. and yeah, the yeah. best, mm -hmm. then you're going to have that locked in you. And it's going to take a little why, bit to why, undo it. And that's why we have sports being infused with people when they're young as well. It's a huge thing. Like you become a fan of a sport mainly because you, you were also saw it when you were young or you played when you were young. Like there's a, there's a real reason why like Tim Hortons works in Canada is because they fucking sponsored hockey. Like period. Like that's Tim Hortons up. was a hockey player. And it was also made for dads or moms who would go to bring their kids and you know to get their cup of coffee because no other place was open to get a cup of coffee. It's a weird thing because like sports about. ultimately is a beautiful thing. It's like if if we lived in a beautiful world, we would just have the World Cup and not war. Because that would be the war. The war would be, I'm gonna kick that footy with this foot uh, and, and and fuck you. In many ways it feels like that's the case. Like I we Oh, are, sports is war. In in yeah. It is war. It's yeah. a game of war without yeah. killing each other. Yeah. It's a humane way to have a nation fight another nation and say, we're better. Fuck off. Mm -hmm. But in, in the crazy world that we're in where war makes a lot of money, they take some of that money, put it into sports, and have it be part of the war. Yeah. Part of the propaganda. It is a huge... I mean, the number one sponsor in the NFL, I believe, is the military. And think about with the new games that are coming out. Is that in true? A, Let me fact check myself here. In what? What? Um, what are you talking about? NFL? NFL, yeah. Dude, that would be crazy. I think it's true. I think That would blow my fucking mind. So you look into that. Yeah. I'll talk about <laughs> video games, which has started in the 80s. And, you know, wasn't the biggest thing. Video games were not the biggest thing in the 80s. They had Pac-Man in your local bar. And then eventually it got really big, where it became bigger than Hollywood. And what happened at that point? Call of Duty 7 Call of Duty 8, Black Ops, and it just won't stop. And if you probably check into Activision, who make Call of Duty or whatever the fuck we're talking about, they get funded straight up by the military. There's just no two ways around it. The crazy amount of money the military gives to the NFL. Here, cheat sheet. Let's see. Let's see if we can find something here. The GDP, half the GDP of the United States, doesn't it go to the military? Uh, something like that. It's like it the like pie 50, chart. The like pie chart's unreal. Cents of every dollar. Yeah, the pie yeah. chart's unreal. It's like half the pie. <laughs> and imagine the beautiful things they could do to this world if they weren't bombing it. Half the fucking chart. Paid at least six million in taxpayer money. Is it to run the drones? What? What? 
But I guess what are they doing? Yeah, but if you're really good at like playing the game, how does that transition into you actually being a good soldier? You the would just run and dock better than the next guy because you just think better. Five point four million split between fourteen teams. Yeah, I guess. But it's it's definitely known that like they were recruiting for drones. Um, so they do spend it. They do spend it on national anthem ceremonies. The military has been greasing the NFL's palms for pregame patriotism. Of course. Air Force flyovers, which ain't cheap. No, of course not. It's just not cheap. The bottom line is it's recruiting tool. It's a recruiting tool, yeah. It's the bottom line. Yeah. And so are video games. So the military, like, the military is the reason why the U.S. exists. The reason why Canada exists, and that's why we're going back into Canada, is because of the Queen. And that's why if the NFL can get money to just sing the national anthem, Disney can get Queen money to talk about how great the Queen is. The tabloids can get Queen money never to about prep that. the Harry story that's happening now. It's I um, literally never thought about the fact that the Queen would literally do a lot of PR in that way. Canadians give her $60 million every year. What's she going to spend it on? Just Canadians. New Zealand gives her money. Australia gives her money. The Bahamas give her money. Give the Queen Scotland, money? Ireland. Yeah, $2 every Canadian every year. Are given to the queen directly to the queen, not the governor no general. No way. Look it up. Sixty million to the queen every year. The governor general also gets sixty million. To re and the governor general, if you don't know, the governor general is the person that is appointed, not elected, to represent the queen in Canada. So she's the one who signs the things into law, and by her signature, it acts as the queen's signature. So the queen doesn't have to do fuck all, and she could just, I don't know, feed her corgis or something. It says so. Oh, this is. Wikipedia here. Uh, the sovereignty similar only draws from the Canadian funds for support in the performance of her duties when in Canada or acting as Queen of Canada abroad. No. Canadians <laughs> do not pay any money to the Queen or any other member of the royal family, either towards personal income or to support royal residences outside of Canada. Bro, it's literally on well, her... Outside of Canada, but they do pay inside of Canada. It's yeah. literally... No, it's, it's acting as Queen abroad, so it's whenever. It's literally on her own website. If you scroll down, you'll find her own website, and it'll literally tell you that you give $2. And then they'll give you a whole spiel that's... Canada's cost... Which, w the spiel is fucked up, because, like, it's their... It's them talking to you, and it just makes no sense. It's like, these people do not relate to regular so people. in 2009, it says... There's an article from McLean's, which is the most Canadian fucking book Of course. Ever. Um, over the past 10 years, the Canadian cost of supporting the monarchy has more than doubled. The Queen costs us more than the Brits. That's what they were saying, yeah. $1.53 uh, per capita each year, yeah? Matt, it's 2009. Yeah, so it is, so, it is actually... Yeah, so through inflation, it's, it's $60 million a year. It's on her website. If you ever want to laugh your ass off, you go to the Queen's website and you read why we need to have a Queen. And you will die. The queen. You will literally website. die when she says, eh, right, why you need to have a queen and please read it verbatim. It's so good. It's like, well, you know, why you need to have a constitutional monarchy is because it's tried and true. The royal.uk, the royal family? Oh, yeah, yeah. That would be great. If there's a little crest at the top, you know you've hit it. Yes, of course. There she is in all her glory. <laughs> The queen. Where? What, what do you think it is? Yeah, but you're better off like googling the article and finding it because, but you know, because it might not be .ca. This one. No, this is .uk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want the .ca? Why Canada needs to have a queen? Why we need to have a constitutional monarchy? Because it's just it's tradition, okay? And without tradition, who would we be? I mean, <laughs> it's who, so good. In a in a weird way, who would we be? Well, Speaking dude, of tradition. fuck tradition at some point when it's like an old lady who's possibly a vampire and killing children and drinking their blood. Jimmy Seville. You know what I mean? Fuck that. Google it. Google Jimmy Seville. All we need to say is Google it. didn't kill himself. <laughs> didn't kill himself. <laughs> no, but Jimmy Seville was the head of the BBC and when he died, people were coming out, oh yeah, that guy like raped me and like sodomized me. And he was running trucks full of orphans to the Queen's compounds all the time. And this guy could go into the Queen's compounds and security would just wave at him. Hello, Jimmy. He was knighted by the Queen. Who's knighting this guy? What's honorable about this guy who owns orphanages, who kills orphans? Mm. Unless he's the procurer. He's the Renfield. And if you don't know what a Renfield is, Renfield is the guy that Dracula employs under the guise that one day you too will be a vampire. This is where the Renfield. fucking stream just starts going. <laughs> We're losing you. We're oh losing my God, you. Our system. <laughs> Renfield is the guy who goes and procures the, the bodies. 
the ones well, that because she has a rare blood disease, right? This is the whole thing. She's oh, you want to get into that? She has a rare blood disease where she has to travel with blood at all times because she needs in. She needs to get new blood all the time. Because she, 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 but it, I, she has advanced hemophilia. Would, yeah, because of inbreeding number one, and also drinking blood. One of the ways to get hemophilia is by drinking blood, and it happened to her ancestors who drank blood. She's an ancestor of Dracula, obviously. You know, uh, whatever his name was, Count Dracula. Whatever, the person who is Dracula. The guy in Transylvania. And other relatives too, the, like the most famous, pull this up, the most famous serial killer woman of all time. I won't ruin the name. And they'll tell you how many people she killed. She killed hundreds of people. And she was a queen. And she would get wenches. Oh, I need a new kitchen wench. And they would get a new kitchen wench. And that kitchen wench would go missing. Although she'd drink the blood. And she'd get another kitchen wench. Who, I, I don't know. Most, no, no, she'll be there. Ten most notorious female. Oh, don't worry, she'll be there. <laughs> she guarantee will be there. Because no one's as crazy as that bitch. I go down these. These are no ones. You're no one compared to her. Mexican professional wrestler Jane Topin. Oh, one was a professional wrestler. How ironic. Yeah. And the ad. Fucking ads. <laughs> Amelia Dyer. Kristen Gilbert. Four murders. Nanny Doss. Yeah, but of these 1900s, no, this is, lame. We need that old school one. Right, Queen. Queen. Queen serial killer. <laughs> no, they have a dark this is, history. This is exactly what Google's like. What the there fuck? There she is. There she is. And how many Vincent people? Bathory? Yeah, how many people? Serial killer from the noble family of Bathany. I don't know. Let's see. So this is a relative of the Queen. Mark's going to pull up the number of how many people Count she killed. Dracula. She's often compared to Vlad the Impaler. She's actually much, much worse. Which, which is the, of, the, of whom the fictional Count Dracula is partially based. Yeah. So the story of Dracula is that, and a lot of the other old stories. Is I actually you, don't know the story of Dracula. The, the old stories back in the day are watch out for the people who live on the top of the hill because they're literally going to rape you and kill you and there's nothing we could do. That's the story of Red Riding Hood. Red Riding Hood is don't go through the forest alone at night. Because a wolf is going to get you. The wolf is not a wolf. The wolf is a man. The wolf is the, is the lord of the land. And if he catches you there and you're a hot fucking redhead, he's killing you and doing shit to you. And that's why, you little redhead, you don't go there. A lot of those stories get, get cleaned up after the fact. And also, like, you know, they don't... You know, if the queen's paying, she doesn't want that story getting out. But... Um, 36 people. Estimated number 50 or higher. Some people say 36, 36... 36 to 37. Something Which would make her one of the biggest serial killers of all time. No, I mean, that's... No. And she was bathing in their blood, believed that by bathing in the blood of young virgins, that she would regain her youth. So we're talking about a, a crazy person. A person that's like getting older and it's not working, yet she's still convinced. She's absolutely convinced. Draw a bath. <laughs> Draw me another bath. <laughs> She's convinced that it would make her younger. She's torturing people and drawing their blood and b bathing in it and drinking it. Wow. And anyways, by doing this, you get a disease. And this is also something that not you could Google, but other people can YouTube this. Watch real life documentaries on vampires. Because people, they don't just shop at Hot Topic and want to look like a vampire. Oh, no, no, no. There's people who actually drink blood in this world. And there's a community in New York, L.A., and maybe it's somewhere else, but the documentary, there's documentaries that focus on the LA and the New York sectors of vampirism, and they get sick, okay? They start by drinking their girlfriend's blood. They get a little like, you know, like, fuck, and they drink some blood. Eventually, they get sick, and it's worse than heroin, and you need to have more blood. So then what do these fuckers do? On camera, in the documentary, they go to the butcher and get blood, saying... Just trying to make a, just trying to make a blood, blood pudding. sausage. Just trying to make blood, blood sausage up in this piece. And they go around the corner on camera again and drink the blood because they don't want to get sick. And we're talking no about every day. Way. Oh yeah, that's what the documentary is about. That these fucking idiots who thought they were cool. And like they're 30, 40 now. They're like old men who are literally sick. They're sick in the head and in the body. Whoa, and wait, they have so to. They just did this to test it. No, they thought it, they thought it was cool. Yeah, yeah. They just did this thing. And then now they're like became addicts to blood. Yeah. They were part My of the subculture, God. and now they're addicts, where they literally don't want to go through the withdrawal. The world is so weird. So they go and get... So, like, once you, once you see 
the old 40 year old man at the butcher ashamed lying trying to get blood and then drinking it you'll know that this is for real this is and of course there's adrenal one of the most famous drugs of the world the most expensive drug of the world which is blood that has adrenal secretions in it adrenaline and the only way to get that drug is to scare someone so bad and then cut their throat and drain the blood and collect it no you could do with animals too no don't don't it doesn't have to be a person is what i'm trying to say but a, a human is one of the only ones that you can really scare bad enough you know what i mean you can really, because they're psychological, you can really scare the shit out of them and get it fresh. Where no the way. pig, like, the pig, can like... they synthetically make adrenaline? No, the, the real adrenal is human blood. It's traded on the black market. It's, like, the most expensive because it involves the procuring of an actual person and killing them. Through fear. So after, it's... After being fearful. After, after scaring the shit out of them. So we're talking about, like, just one shot is, like, what a, is what Just, is like, crazy? one one shot of it is, like, we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. But what is, that's wild. What is crazy is that there is such a massive network of people that are literally sold, like literally robbed from wherever, cradle or whatever it is. And that's what you brought and, up before. And, like the guy who, uh, J J Epstein was involved in that. The biggest, yeah. the biggest sales of things in the world are weapons, drugs. And women. And women. Or sex in sex, general. Uh, yeah, sex, sex in general. Sex three. So we went to the adrenal. You know, there's heroin. Heroin makes a lot of money. Adrenal makes a shit ton of money too. It's just a darker side of things that doesn't get onto the mainstream. And then sex. And and then human body parts are now a thing, like uh, like the black market for like for. And that could be like the second hand liver. of the once you you can get adrenal and sell livers and stuff like that. So it works hand in hand with that. And they could be gaining them from the sex world. That's so, so it's crazy perfect. Crazy though. The the guy Where's Epstein. Where's the market for that? Like, but, but Epstein you know I mean? was like. like no, like, what is the likelihood that I know someone that has in any way been involved in the sex trade? And the likelihood has to be high. I do. And it's fucking brutal. Really? It's brutal, bro. In Montreal, like, there's, there's... And Montreal, not that I've Montreal, seen it. Not no, that no, no, I've seen on, it, but on. I've Montreal, heard stories. Montreal has, like, a large, a large amount of, like, um, escorts and those kinds of things. Are you considering escorts part of that sex work? No, I mean, I'm talking about women way. chained to shit really i'm talking about women who fly in they don't even know what country they're in and they're chained to things and they're underage and you know you literally i know think i this? i think i know people okay, who are involved no no but you think because I, you know. I don't want to say anything yeah that may, I, i'm not asking you to say anything. no no but i think yes you believe that there are people involved in that 100 percent. well you got to clean money somehow and they clean money and they look they turn a blind eye and so otherwise they're in like a they're in like a drug trade they're in scenario? yes they're in they're in one of the three trades yeah one of and the they cross military drugs and or <laughs> yeah it's not yeah. weapons yeah it's usually drugs yeah and uh you clean it and in montreal it's a drug you, thing. you clean it because it goes hand in hand with that kind of stuff and you just turn a blind eye how's you know? that cleaning it because they'll make you more money it's easier to clean if you have more of it because you can lose some of it you know what i mean mm. Yeah, because you have to you have to clean it in the sense that you have to do something with it. And if you're gonna just like give it to another shady spot, but it comes back even more, that's technically cleaning it. What I what I find is wild is like I mean just the amount of the amount have how maybe not these clean things, it's working it. Yeah, but the amount of how these things affect entire nations. Like you look at Colombia. I mean, Colombia is made through like it. It is but synonymous dude, think, with cocaine. Think about Montreal. Montreal compared to Toronto, fucking nothing. Everyone that's out there trying to get a job, they can't get a job to save their fucking life. But Montreal... Montreal runs on weed, bro. Montreal runs cocaine. Montreal runs... runs uh, drugs. That's it runs saying. drugs, bro. Drugs. Yeah. There's... That's what there's I'm saying. Everyone I know... Like, literally, I walked into the hall here, and everyone was, like, going out to smoke a joint, going out... Like, legit, every person was participating in drugs. When I looked down the hall, I was like, this is fucking weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's was, just weird. That's, guy, that's... There was a guy who moved out. He used to own an escort service here. Yeah. I haven't met him. One of my neighbors, or whatever, does does it works in the weed industry or whatever. And things I, mean, are I don't 18, know what these guys do. And things are eighteen. And I'm not, I'm not, you like, can be eighteen to party here. Yeah, no, but some of them are legal, like legal businesses. What I mean by that is like they get permits for di di different things. But Montreal does run on an industry surrounding drugs. Video games is another thing. AI is another thing. We were starting to be known for some things. I think we run on art too. We got a decent art scene here for sure. 
But uh, the art has to do with that the regular jobs are so bullshit and lame that the regular into that, the arts. that to make this the people survive, you have to put the rent down. If the rent's down, artists are coming. Yeah. From around the world, they're coming. Yeah. They're flocking in. Because once it's low, they can work part time and then focus on their art. That's why Montreal's a huge artist town and Toronto, they got nothing. They got absolutely nothing because the rent's so damn high. Because mm-hmm. the regular jobs pay okay. Yeah. Now Montreal is, and you have to have a regular job to even like live there. But I think there's richer people in Montreal than there ever will be in Toronto. Richer from the perspective of like life lifestyle rich, or mm-hmm. richer as in money rich. Money rich. I don't know about that. McGill. Sure. The organization that is McGill. McGill owns Mount Saint Hilaire. Yeah. And like, who owns the mountain, the Mount Royal? Well, c- c- uh, schools are massive organizations. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah. McGill was still he's a bootlegger. Was he not? He was a fur tradesman. Okay, so he these are old time money guys who who basically own the top of the mountain, Mount Royal type scenario, and, and then I, he left his money for an endowment for running the school. Yes, that's, that's and that thing still makes crazy money, and it had to of do course. with Montreal is a port city. You got to come in through the the yes. Saint Lawrence River, and you have to pass through Montreal. Yes. When you pass through Montreal, that's where the, the goods get shipped. That's where the cocaine comes in, and they're not gonna let it go to Toronto to, for the money to be made down there. Fuck that. Do you think that most of the drugs are moving through ships, not through planes? It must be. In Montreal, yeah, it's all ship. It's all the dock. Yeah, the dock is... The just Irish run the dock. But how is this not just being like... Because everything's greased. Everything's nice and greased. Greased because... Meaning everyone gets their cut. Even the cops, basically. Like, the mayor, is, the mayor was probably... Because she won, like, out of nowhere using social media. And stuff like that. It really was a grassroots type win. Mm-hmm. She was probably told that, like, these certain things that you don't even touch. Yeah. That's guaranteed in my show. I believe that you that, are that approached. must be part of day one of any political job. It's like, all right, you don't fuck with this. You don't fuck you with do that. You do not, bro. In Montreal, they killed, they killed big mafia guys sitting at the kitchen table with their kids. Sniper through the window. They could have killed them whenever they wanted. But it's a big fucking message that like, not only are we going to kill you, but we're going to have your kids see it. Yeah. Through your kitchen window. And there was the other guy who was shot in this fucking Bentley. Just had a stop. Just had a red light. Boom. Yeah. They get away with it. So, like... It's so crazy that You all play that fair. Is, but when you talk real. about that world, you play fair. Epstein was not going to play fair, so they believed, so he dies. Well, I mean, a lot of people believe that he was a CIA guy. A lot of people believe that Who he knows? was he on was, the inside to get dirt on other people. I don't know. I think Like, he, like a Prince Andrew. But he was, a, he was a stockbroker or someone that worked in stocks. Yeah. And was around people with a lot of money. Yeah. Found out that they were spending a lot of money on sex. So he got out of stocks and got into sex trafficking. But, but did he do that from the perspective of, like, look, it's possible he just did that naturally. And then he get, gets discovered and they say, hey, you're going to fucking stay out of jail. You got to fucking now do it to get dirt on these people. It's possible. Like, cause, you know, and then a lot they of find out say, and like, they fucking oh, Bill Clinton's been on his plane for 20, 26 times or whatever it is to 20 some odd times. Is that because he's like a, like a government guy? Right? Like. Like look at like look at Bin Laden, right? Bin Laden was a CIA guy, and then and then all of a sudden he becomes a useful terrorist. Oh, is it a wrestling? Is it a wrestling show? That is a good. It, I mean, dude, it, Bin Laden every, is wrestling, bro. Every, they literally flew his family out. <laughs> okay, uh, we just, you just uh, we the, didn't you tell you about the America? wrestling plan, but you better get on that plane right now because shit's about to go down. <laughs> all right, we're getting on the plane. It's true. They really did save his whole family. They saved his whole family. Yeah. It makes no sense. Yeah. It makes it, I, just fucking do it four months before. Yeah. Erratically. Like they just left erratically. Not like it happens and then they leave. It makes. I mean, look, I, I, I still believe 9 11 was. Some, it's some it's shame almost business. like. Planes it's almost like. Towers. I'm not saying. It's almost like they leave breadcrumbs so that people are like, look, man, it's fucking a conspiracy. And then you get the, the people who you know that they could convince if it happened like. A little bit more moderately and, and slowly, but you make it so overt and obvious that those people literally go, there's no way they get scared and they just bury their head. That they leave those crumbs so that it is so crazy. Like they bombed their own buildings and brought it to the ground at free fall speed. And that, that that's so crazy that you literally bury your head with it. That you bury your head. There's no way. Because to believe that is to believe some crazy shit. It's to, well, it's to believe crazy shit because the entire time of your entire life, you were nursed to believe that this is the land hey, of, 
of patriotism and the free and blah blah and blah. And the Cowboys. And and part and Cowboys and, versus Indians. Fairness, that used to be the old NFL game, eh, guys? Cowboys versus the Redskins. I mean, it's still a thing, right? They're yeah, still in the it's same still the, it's still the fucking Turkey Bowl. Yeah. But it's like that was the Super Bowl and shit. Yeah, in Cowboys the 80s. versus Indians. Yeah, no, I mean, it's there's still two teams in the same division. The Redskins and the Cowboys mm-hmm. are in the same division in the NFL still today. But the but the idea of 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 them bombing their own tower is scary. But but part of that might like they do that in a way. Let's let's assume that that's all staged, right? Just to some mm-hmm. whether I believe it or not doesn't matter. Assuming that it's all staged, they're doing that as a way to grow patriotism in a weird way. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is that you make it so you make the person sound so crazy, the one who actually is thinking for themselves that that fell a few false feet and that doesn't really make much sense. What are you saying? That it's well, I'm saying that they fucking bomb this thing that statement right there what they lead you to say is so outrageous that people are instantly like well, what the fuck fuck out of here and they don't want to hear it because you're what you're leading them to is so scary mm-hmm. but if you were just leading them to uh they just want to make war and make money they don't allow you to have that as your main talking point your main talking point is that the buildings were bombed and thousands of people were murdered for this war for what? To make money, obviously. But you, it's a secondary point. You're like, oh, to make money. You're not like adamant about that one. So because you're adamant about they murdered thousands of people, you're scaring people. That means they would murder me. Mm-hmm. So no, I can't. I can't listen. I can't hear that. And it's the perfect psych. It's the perfect uh, psyop. It just absolutely scares some people, and that's why I think Alex Jones was also used in that regard. Which Alex Jones is just the loudest, most aggressive one of all. Where it's like, wouldn't you, couldn't you have a bookworm guy that's more like, you see in Vietnam, yeah, they had the Gulf of Tonkin. Nobody, nobody wouldn't, you wouldn't, that doesn't rile people up. Like, the person who is a conspiracy theorist is also addicted to being riled up. But this is that's again, part of, that's but part this of is the again game, the right? mankind versus the rock thing. When you get people riled up, what happens to the other side? Yeah, they also They rile up, up against it. Yeah. And that's what they need. They don't need like so that's a why, guy slowly so, ramping so, the troops so, on so, this side and then... The other side's like, what are you guys ramping so that, up about? And then it's like, oh, we're just ramping up about this. So, and it's like, oh, but maybe I'll come and see what you guys are doing because you're not aggressive. Yeah. So I'll come see what you're doing. But if you're aggressive and weird, then I have to be the counter op. They're always which the is, counter op. Yeah. Which is ignorant. So, so you're they don't saying, want aggressively so, ignorant. So, so, so hold on, hold on. With Alex Jones as an example, you're not saying they put him in place and do this character, play the character. Maybe you're saying that. I, just hear me out. He's allowed to play the character because it's perfect. It's again like football. But do you think that naturally happened is what I'm asking? It's naturally happening. It's great for business, but... So they let it play out. But the other guy... But if, who, they, but if it, when it's not working for them, they just take him which out. Which was... Um, Epstein. No, no. It was the guy before Alex Jones that was murdered uh, we, like a month before 9-11. He oh, was murdered. Oh, yeah, yeah. The guy we were predicting 9-11 as well. Yeah, right? it was uh, Bill... Hicks or no Hicks? No, 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 Bill Hicks. People believe is Alex, Alex Jones. Jones. Yeah, yeah. No, it's Bill something. We, you and I had this conversation. It's Bill something. You blew my mind on that one because it's weird. I know it is. It's weird. really weird. Speaking that, of weird, dude. Today I fucking Googled. We. I, I had. I, I. don't know how I even got onto this, but the, the fact that there are Bill other, Cooper. It's Bill Cooper. Yeah. Bill he Cooper. was shot yeah. on his front porch by police, mm-hmm. and uh, because he was saying "get off my porch" and was about to grab his rifle, they had no reason to be there. They just they killed him. He had a radio. He was running his own radio station. He was an ex-Navy. Yeah. He saw like a UFO while he was in the Navy and then uh, started doing his own research. Ex got out of the N- Navy and started his own radio sh- show and uh, wrote a book, Beho- Behold a B- uh, Pale Horse. And he was one of the original. He is Alex Jones. Like, who he was Al- the original character that... that yeah, he, yeah, Alex Jones is like almost based on Bill Cooper. Mm-hmm. It just seems like a copycat type scenario. You know what I mean? And uh, Alex Jones is uh, magnetizing, you know? If you're into this... He must have died a lot, like, uh, in terms of his following, must have been really slashed through all this. Because of the YouTube got cut and stuff like that? It was YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, it was everything. That's another rallying point, though, is it not? It is, but it's hard. Now it's like, yes, and how do I... Like, even though I... Like, look, I used to see more Alex Jones stuff, now I never see it. So I, I forget about him fully. Which is perfect. Even, which is perfect because they, they don't want the gray zone. They just want the hype, crazy idiots who are going to like go on his website and eat everything he fucking sells them. Alex Jones works for Fox. I mean, I don't he know. He works for Fox, bro. It happened so many times where... He, he sided with Trump, I give you that. 
at yeah. the perfect time. And then they radio silence him. And now only the now they are using him properly, which is like they got the raw raw guys over here making other people bury their hands in the sand. Everyone else don't listen. Mm. And also he he talked about Trump. He played his card. It's over. Now we know that he's just like how you and he's still probably for Trump. If you go well, check it, he's he's probably still for Trump, which is like what he's making wars and it's the same well, thing. Because and, he, no, because some people believe that Trump was taking on the deep state in a big way. Perfect story. Is Perfect that, story. Is that a, I mean, maybe it's a real story. Maybe there's a real truth to the fact that tr- Donald Trump it's is possible. doing some crazy shit. It's possible. It is possible. It's 100 percent possible. And we're gonna have to I, I wait. Would, I wouldn't have to wait. Him. I really wouldn't put that. Like I, I, I look. I don't like the character that Donald Trump plays. I don't like the character. It could be a necessary for evil part. for that role. I. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. No. Uh, time will tell. Yeah. And I'm willing to accept that. That is. If you're saying that that's where it could go, dude. Honestly. It, everything is playing up for that scenario to play out, but also, do you still think that? But like also, a, a it could be one is still going down. No, they changed the name of it. No, I get that, but do you still so think that that, that, that they energy, wanted to go down? But dude, the fact that the name changed that sucks for them. That yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Now, Agenda Twenty One is the plan to strike, basically make a new world order. It's a new, new world order's uh, plan. Uh, 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 global government where the oligarchy and like basically the rich become ridiculously rich which is already the case realistically yeah, but it's really but like to hone in more, like yeah, you are not allowed power. to own private land in agenda 21 because humans pollute and only yeah. corporations can own land you might be scratching your head because i thought that corporations were the ones who polluted but that's agenda 21 and unelected officials in the un control the rest of it you're gonna live in a condo with an iga supermarket you pay, on your you fucking you third you floor for breathing essentially yeah and farting probably the cows are farting so you need to get taxed now you yeah. can't have a car it's basically like taking away the middle class. That's essentially what it is. It's removing the middle class in developed nations and having them and be then, shamed. Yeah. Being shamed into a role of like... Servitude. Servitude. Just higher taxes, which is already what Montreal is kind of like. And Montreal is the city of the future for Agenda 21. Is Montreal really like that? Because we don't have a middle class. We have a ton of middle we class. We get taxed... Dude, I'm if, middle class. If you pay your taxes in Quebec... You're getting taxed 49% anybody who, or worse. Anybody who does not know how to deal with the tax system is losing the game like, big time. I agree Yes, but that. the majority of them don't even know. They I don't agree. even know. I, I it's, it's coming at them right, left, and center that they're not even aware that they're losing 49% because they're getting tax on tax on tax. They're not even... It's so tricky that, like... Dude, you go get gas at the fucking gas station and half your gas is tax. Mm-hmm. Do people know that? I mean, I think people do. It's just they don't know what they can do That's why it. it's That's why your gas is so expensive because half of it is tax... That's why when you go and you're like, oh, I guess they're not charging me tax on that. Nah, dummy, check the bill. They already did. And it's a lot more than 15%. So you got tax there. You got taxed when you bought food. You got taxed when you bought this thing, your car. You got taxed. Then later you tried to sell your car. Uh, I'm trying to tax that again. You just taxed it. Oh, but the book says it's worth this much. I'm taxing it again. A, t- a car can death, be... Death is the worst. And you get taxed to death. Your car can be taxed like four times in its lifetime. It makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. And that's what Montreal is like, and that's why it's well. That's what we're primed. What, what some people would say is socialism is like. Yeah. So, uh, yo, if you if socialism you pay your taxes, like- you'll have sick roads and amazing healthcare. And if the roads make you sick because they're bumpy, you won't get sick because our healthcare is so sick. But, you but quote some me on places that. that are the most taxed tend to be are seen as some of the best places in the world. Sweden is an example or whatever in terms of the standard of living and happiness. It's and a fairy tale. Well, so. It's a fairy tale. You go to the hospital and it's a fluorescent building of stainless steel and there could be a pathogen that's fucking like man-eating disease in there because they're so stupid they don't even know how to stop that and i bring up the halogen lights and uh the stainless steel because it's actually not it's not hygienic it's really bad for the building to be made out of those things out of glass and steel with uh, fluorescent lights those are the worst things for human health and that's what our hospitals are made out of that shows that they don't even know what they're doing and their major thing that they're going to walk you into the cancer machine. Oh, sir, you have cancer? We have treatment for that. But I'm looking for a cure. No, 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 we don't have the cure. We only have this big microwave. <laughs> Please, this microwave costs us millions of dollars. You must use it. And every time you get microwaved, they get to write a check to the government saying, we microwave that person, and they get money. And that's what our system is set up for. And pills. No, I mean... Pills, bro. You gotta be on a, you gotta be on a pill regiment. You got that little box with the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The most, most, we're the most medicated. I think Quebec is the most medicated in depression pills. And that's a tax. After you paid your tax for the pills to be cheap, 
they're going to charge you for the pills again. It makes no sense. So like when you really factor in how they're coming at you, you got no money. You got no money to live your life. You're just working to fucking die. And they'll sell you the fairy tale that like... You're just working to fucking die. And they'll sell you the fairy tale that it's like, it's so sick though in the summer. It's so great. (laughs) We got parks that they pay a million dollars to put a bar. No, no. The tree stumps was the best. (laughs) The tree... The the, the things that look like like chopped down trees for like 13 million or whatever. Every time. It's every time. If you don't know, it's like in Montreal, it's an ongoing joke where they're like, we have the most parks though. And you go to the park and they'll have a sign, which how much it costs. And then they'll be like... (laughs) It would be like calisthenic bars that they set up for a million dollars. And you'd be like, yo, your friend John could have did that for 15K. Yeah. But everyone's got to eat, right? Remember when we went to that it, meeting and, it, it, hey, on se paye la traite? It's true. Remember, no, I, so we're going to end this on, on this on this note. Germ, I, I, I was thinking about this the other day. I'm the first investor in Germ D art officially from the perspective of design when we were running a, t- a t-shirt company. That's very right? true. And as a, this is a throwback, but the idea of that is... I remember how we started design. Your the, the first art business that you were running, like full stop, mm-hmm. was you make. We had a uh, what is it called? Um, screen press or whatever. No um, heat transfer. We had a sublimation, not really a sublimation, but it was like a, tra- a heat transfer T-shirt system. Yeah, and then we would print that out on a big printer. But we got the printer from a guy. Remember this? Oh, off yes. the forty, where we went into a fucking where it was. I don't even call it a warehouse. It was just like a room in a. Skyrise building that was kind of decapitated. Oh, yeah. And these guys would go to auctions from the Canadian government, Quebec and Canadian government, my understanding. And literally, because the government had a budget, let's say they had a budget of a million, but they had only spent 900000 and next week the budget and the new budget was coming out, they would spend all their money as much as possible to replace a bunch of machinery and things uselessly so that their budget wouldn't get cut the next round. Yeah. So they would, and, so they would see that, like, they need the money because yeah. they they you can't need. Cut me. We need the money. We used all of it. We used it to buy this ninety thousand dollar printer again. Yeah, and so they had re- so they would just sell it to these guys, these auction. They guys. would auction it. The and guys, would, guys them. would buy them. And we then- bought them for two hundred. A no, fifty. It was more than that. What no, is it? no, the printer. We bought the printer for two hundred dollars. No, I think it was four hundred. No, was, no, because we bought two. Yeah, you're right. We did buy two. It was two hundred dollars, and that was a fifty thousand dollar printer. So what did they get it for? Because I don't even think they got it for 100 bucks. I think they got it for 50 bucks. They probably did go for 50 bucks. Yeah. We really spent only 200 bucks on the printer? Yes. Each. That. Yeah. I remember, I remember the press. We and broke the one and we went back and we're like, can we have another? <laughs> yeah, no yeah, problem. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> and on that There were three floors. No, no. Let's, let's just continue with the fact that uh, this is a Superhero Academy podcast. And you are the one who taught me about entrepreneurship. If we're going to talk about that time, that's the first time that I realized that you could run your own business. And you weren't subject to the storyline that was being you didn't fed to, play to you. The character that they told you you had to play. Yeah. So the storyline that you were fed as a kid and going to school and all that stuff, that's when that got kind of like broke down for me that, oh my God, you can actually run your own business. And from there, I started running all kinds of businesses mm-hmm. until I found out a business that I really enjoyed. And that's something that everyone should, I think, try in their life is try running without any fear a lot of businesses. If you have an idea, try it out. And if you don't like it, Drop it like it's hot. Passion and profit. Just stop. Turn your passions into profit. Just stop and find the next thing that might make you passionate because it might take you 10 years. Oh, it took will me, take you 10 it years. It took me 10 years to figure out what it is that I really want to do. And the faster you find it, the better and happier you'll be. So you got to start somewhere. Just start with, even if you think it, eh, this might not be it, try it because it might have the grains in it. It might have like a little bit of the salts that you need that are that you're going to notice later. So on that note, this is Superhero Academy and uh shout out. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, no problem. Uh links in the description. You know where the things are. All the things blah, 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 go do the things. If you got all the way to this part of this thing, then you know you got to click that thing over here, the thing, maybe the thing that goes ding 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 on YouTube or the thing that goes on uh Facebook or the thing that goes on Instagram, you know where to find him. And uh, wait, did you stop it yet? Okay, good. And if you made it this far, there's one of two things you could do. You could either do your taxes right, and I mean right, or don't pay them at all. All right, see you later. <laughs> Bye. <Bye-bye. laughs>